London train lines are being given new names in homage to diversity. And it's every bit as cringe and embarrassing as you'd expect. The six lines of the London Overground are being individually named to ensure London's transport system reflects its rich and diverse history. Let me guess, Windrush again. The Windrush line honours the generation of Caribbean migrants who came to live in Britain from the 22nd of June 1948. The Windrush line. Mass migration is inevitable, it's your fault and diversity is our greatest strength. The wind Windrush line. The white people bad line. <laughs> All aboard the Windrush line. We should include the Cockney line, a one-way route out of London for the white working classes displaced by unchecked immigration. I'm just taking the gay race communist line to Hackney May. Self-immolating on the Windrush line. We will shortly be arriving at Empire Windrush Station where this country terminates. Don't miss your stop, wagey. And remember, colonialism bad, white people bad. The Windrush line. Another one of them's named to remind everyone of AIDS. The Mild May line. In reference to an NHS hospital that was noteworthy during the HIV crisis. Presumably a nod to the alphabet people and the NHS. <laughs> Two birds, one stone. Yeah, I'll be about half an hour, mate, just getting on the AIDS line to Clapham Junction. The Mild May line. Pictured a man trying to get a doctor's appointment on the Mild May line in 2028. They inform him that there's no appointments with a doctor, but they can offer him one with a Nigerian nurse with fake qualifications who's been allowed to stay after a four-day training course. And another one's named after the Lionesses, the female England football team. The Lioness Line. As a continuation of the bizarre multi-year brainwashing programme to force everyone to believe that women's football is entertaining or interesting in any way. It still isn't. Mate. Losing your job because of a sexist joke and ending it all by jumping on the tracks on the Lioness Line as passers-by yell, Mate! Mate! Welcome on board this Lioness Line service to Wembley. Please mind the gap between how great Brit poppers think women's football is in reality. The Lioness Line celebrates the phenomenal success and legacy of the England women's football team. Oh, you mean the one that just lost the World Cup final? It's tough. And of course, there's the mandatory feminist genuflect. The suffragette line celebrates how the movement paved the way for women's rights. Why not just be totally transparent about it? Britain is finished line. Fuck you, lol line. You should emigrate line. It's over line. We hate you line. Windrush line. Now talking about cloying authoritarianism being imposed from above. Let me tell you about Big Pharma benefiting from medical emergencies. FDA employees overseeing drug approvals. I'm working for the same pharmaceutical companies selling those drugs. We're bombarded with band-aids in the form of pills and jabs that we have to take for eternity. And as we saw during the pandemic, anything they don't control is labelled fake news. Derided, subdued and censored. Did you know that heart disease accounts for approximately 25% of all US deaths annually? Equally as shocking, almost 46% of US adults struggle with high blood pressure. What's more, every 40 seconds someone in the United States suffers a heart attack. These numbers are serious wake-up calls, but what can we do about it? Well, since you asked, I'll tell you about Black Forest Cocoa Flavanols. This isn't just any supplement, it's a game-changer. A recent groundbreaking 21,400-person Harvard five-year study found that consuming 500 milligrams of cocoa flavanols per day significantly reduced deaths from cardiovascular disease by 27% compared to placebo. That percentage jumped to 39% among people taking their cocoa flavanols daily. Researchers found a mean meaningful reduction in cardiovascular events, including heart attacks and strokes. This thing has been dubbed the miracle powder and it can help you gain your heart health back. The significance of cocoa flavanols in promoting heart health has gained such recognition, even the FDA has been forced to acknowledge their potential. Traditional dark chocolate and cocoa have an average of only 100 milligrams of cocoa flavanol per serving. Black Forest performance chocolate products deliver 1200 milligrams of cocoa flavanols with just 30 35 calories per serving and zero sugar. And specially for this video, they've agreed to an amazing buy two, get one free 48 hour deal. This is a great opportunity to stock up because you never know when Big Pharma's gonna try to intervene. Arm yourself with knowledge, take control of your health. Get your Black Forest Cocoa Flavanols today by taking advantage of that ridiculous offer 
by clicking the link down below. This, of course, is all coming from Sadiq Khan and TFL, the same organisation that lectures you about manspreading. The cost of this woke rebrand? 6.3 million fucking quid. The country just entered a recession. The London Rail Network is notoriously overcrowded, overpriced, and in some cases literally falling apart. The trains constantly break down because they're decades old and haven't been replaced. The network routinely doesn't function at all and cancellations are common place. But hey-ho, here's £6 million for some signs to reinforce the message. London's transport system reflects its rich and diverse history. Yes, London train stations and the trains too may increasingly be crumbling dangerous, seedy, crime-infested ghettos. Thefts and robberies just surged by 50%. You might get macheted or acid attacked. But look, we called them some nice words. Aren't you impressed? <laughs> Meanwhile, in the Moscow subway... appalling lack of diversity. The London tradition is that public transport lines are given a name either with a royal connection or one related to the line's geography. Given them political names is whether one agrees with the politics or not a break with that tradition. It's part of the general forced politicisation of so many aspects of our daily life nowadays. Over and above that, it's about recolonisation and classic Maoist re-education. A prominent feature of the Red Terror was the obsession with renaming everything. The scum and grits, such as street names, insulting the Chinese people left by imperialism and revisionism must be completely destroyed. There have been many campaigns across the country, from renaming Liverpool's Penny Lane. We've got to recognise uh, that our public realm, statues, squares, street names, don't accurately reflect our values or, or London in, in 2020. They are putting up quotations from Chairman Mao Zedong. The Chinese people will go all out to establish the new ideas, new culture, new customs and new habits of the proletariat. The Windrush line. But if we call the road diversity close, won't that make them believe diversity really is a strength? On the surface, it's just drippy, performative political correctness. But dig a little deeper and you'll realise it's not just an act of historical vandalism. It's ritual humiliation and demoralisation. It's about you not even being allowed to navigate through your daily environment without constantly being bombarded with reminders of the message. If you value what I do and you want to help support me, please visit pauljosephwatson.locals.com and either pledge a one-time donation or subscribe to join my community, get early access videos and message me directly. And exclusive live streams coming soon too. Promise. Check out the Locals link down in the description. And don't forget to take a look at the brand new website, modernity.news. That's where you'll find all my content, including exclusive articles. That's modernity.news. <laughs>